the average American gets their first chronic disease at 50. Okay. And they have two by 60. And they spend the last 15 years of their life in treatment. And the average life expectancy is about 78, I think, for women and 76 for men. So there was a study that was done by Harvard where the outcome will make you laugh, but it also opens your eyes to exactly what you just said. So the, the longest ongoing health study that we've seen started in the 1930s and it's still going on today. And what they're saying is what the people that are getting to like 90 plus, what are they doing? And here's the outcome of the study. Don't smoke less than three drinks a week, eat a balanced whole food diet, exercise more than three times a week and maintain a healthy body weight. That's what they discovered after researching data on, I think it's 70,000 people. For almost 100 years. Yeah. So why does this matter? Because these simple things will get you from 78 to 90. That's an extra 12 years. Yeah. And 78 to 90 were the last 10 years weren't spent sick, which is what's happening for the people that aren't doing these things, right? So why is this important? Because... You already had the God-given gift of being a centenarian. You're designed, if you look at the physical structure of DNA, it's actually designed to last 120 years. So the physical form as a structure is designed to last 120. So the things we do are taking years away, right? And the simplest habits of just removing the nonsense that's taking years or years away will get you from 78 to 90, as proven by this study. Then you look at these blue zones where people add a little bit more, where, you know, they have a sense of purpose. They have a lot of love. They, 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 every day with the family, oxytocin is a base hormone. It creates every other hormone. keeps you healthy, right? Toxic relationships aren't there. Stress is low. They move. Like you said, they're moving all, to, all the time. They don't, they're not taking 100 supplements a day. They're not going to a, a gym five times a week, although there's nothing wrong. I go to a gym. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I'm saying their lifestyle is active. Correct. They're not sedentary. They move, yeah. And they're moving complex so they're walking up and down hills they're hiking through forests to get to different locations carrying things whatever carrying things yeah which they're you know half of your nervous system is in your legs which signals back to the brain i need to stay young and healthy i'm still active i'm still moving so the simplest habits when, when you look at people that have actually got to 110 115 120 where they were still playing with their great-grandchildren and look at what they did to get there it's mostly about what they didn't do which most of us are doing versus what they did do. They didn't add all the therapies and treatments, et cetera. All that stuff is great. And especially if you're living in the United States where you're in a toxic soup, you probably need those things, right? But most of what got them there was just not doing the things that we're doing. Hmm. The excessive caffeine, the smoking, everything in between. All of it, yeah. Um, one of your recent videos like that really <coughs> kind of blew my mind a little bit, which is so simple, um, the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a household where everything was hand washed. Yeah. Everybody turns to the dishwasher. I think I've turned on a dishwasher like four times in my life. Yeah. Um, why is it so bad? So again, the modern conveniences, right? I get it. If we're busy, maybe you shouldn't be that busy. You know, maybe it, uh, it, does it make a difference whether it's, you know, $100,000 or $120,000? Like what, what do you actually need, right? Um, that dishwasher... When you turn it on, uh, what you can't see is the toxic puck, which evaporates and now becomes part of your source of air, right? What so, if you change the detergent being? So there are clean organic detergents. It's funny when I posted that, if anyone wants to go see the post, a whole bunch of people started talking about their made at home recipes, which is really cool. They're all sharing with each other very basic, simple things you could do that are clean. And this is again what I mean by modern conveniences. Our only option, we think, is to go to the store and buy what's on the shelf mm -hmm. versus you don't need to do that. There's a lot of things that are very easy to do. Minutes. It takes minutes, literally. Toothpaste, shampoos, etc. Minutes to make stuff, right? So, yeah, so now you all of a sudden you have formaldehyde in your air. Uh, so the study showed that children, that, and I think they studied 1,029 children, and the children that were born or grew up, sorry, in houses with hand dishwashing, didn't have asthma and respiratory issues. The kids that are growing up in dishwasher homes did because every day they were breathing in the vapor and the um, the mist of... When you warm up formaldehyde, it becomes much more bioavailable, first of all. And when you take fluoride, which is in the water, and you heat it and evaporate it, it turns into something called fluorine, which is, becomes carcinogenic level, right? So that exposure doesn't happen for the hand washing. 
families. Basic, simple stuff. Anything that you do that feels like a modern convenience, think twice about what is actually happening in front of me. Is this something clean and natural or is it a pile of chemicals? Because that's not the only thing I'm doing. There's 10 other things in my house that might be similar and add them all together and actually think about what you've ingested in your body. If I gave that to you in a cup, you would never do it. No chance. Yeah. I had someone on a while ago and they were just talking about, you like taking hot showers? I'm like, sometimes. Yeah. He's like, you just vaporized everything. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you're cooking it. Yeah. And, you know, do you have a water softener at home? Do you have pre-filtration? Like, you're not going to get rid of everything, but limit. Yeah. And then what are you cleaning your shower with? And if you're taking super hot showers, you're then vaporizing whatever chemicals were in the shower. Yeah. And it's just wild that, you know, being medically trained, like, it's taken talking to all these different people to be like, oh, we do need to make a change. We yeah. do need to get rid of this. Obviously, you're not going to live that perfect dream life, but you'll be able to limit maybe 50%. Yeah, a lot more. Once, this, once you go down the path of making this an intention and you start to open your eyes to all of what you're surrounded by, it becomes a priority and you start to feel so good about how you feel. You know, there's a there's a guy named Joe Polish that runs this group called the Genius Network. It's like a networking group. And I remember something he said on stage once. Somebody was talking to him about eating sugar and foods. He used to have the weight issue and he doesn't anymore. And what he said was, the reason I'm never going back is because there's no good, I'm sorry, no food that tastes as good as the way I feel. And he rubbed his belly. So when he's able to see his toes, right, <laughs> and he's able to see his abs, and that ability, so dopamine in your brain, dopamine is where, why you seek pleasure. So you need to bind dopamine. There's receptors in your brain that bind it. Then you clear it out and you come back to some baseline. This is why we seek pleasure for that dopamine hit. Dopamine also powers reward, achievement, and you don't need both. You need one. And the, the satisfaction that you get from reward is more powerful than what you get from pleasure. It's harder to start, but it's easier to continue. And why am I saying this? Because when you get used to saying no, the satisfaction of saying no and doing it a different way is more addictive than the yes you were stuck in. The pleasure, like the easy way. Right? So it's, it's hard to start, but once you start, you propel yourself in a different direction. That's what we need to do. It's like going to the gym. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Week one is hell. I think month one is hell. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually it's like, it's, it is your identity. Oh, yeah. Right? You can't, you can't, you can't not do it. You got to, you know, I don't like physically going to the gym, but I do other things to stay active yeah. and just keep it moving. And yeah. it's not fun, you know, not feeling good. Yep. Yeah. And I wish more people just got, it's not going to break the bank making these changes. No, you'll save money because you're going to bring less stuff into your home. Yeah. And even like the toothpaste that you're talking about and the body soap, like you can actually limit that cost by yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, brother, where can people find you if they want to continue this knowledge and health journey? And are you able to still do the DNA readings for people? And Yeah, I would say, um, so go to Instagram. That's where I go to vent on a daily basis, <laughs> you know? So whatever I'm learning, and there's always, it's never going to end, I think, because there's so much. So go learn there. Go to my Instagram account, Cash Call Official, um, and you'll your eyes will be open in terms of what we now know. Uh, and you'll it will help you get on that different trajectory of thinking differently and seeking different stuff um in terms of working with me in my link in my bio there's i do a weekly webinar just to teach people how more that we if you want to dive deeper on the genetic side how we can use your dna to personalize everything i've talked about i would say attend the webinar you know um and if you're busy you can't attend all that time just watch the replay it will completely open your eyes so go to my bio register if you can attend live great if you can't watch the replay and you will learn an entirely different way to approach your health Amazing, brother. Appreciate yeah. you coming on. I know you're a little under the weather. Yeah, man. I'm going to go back to sleep, though. <laughs> <All right. laughs>